Hello everyone and welcome to Split Second. My name is Cicada and I'll be taking you through today's match. Before starting, we at Split Second want to thank everyone for your constant support and suggestions on all social media. You can continue to support us by sharing and liking this video, subscribing if you haven't yet, by becoming a patron, or simply by not skipping the ads on our videos. We also want to congratulate TJ Raff for winning our 4000 subscribers Watchtower 100. We will make a new raffle once we reach 6,000 subscribers. This week, we are joined by Pedro Leite, a regular at our LGS and a gamer streamer who quickly rose through our tournament ranks with his all-in decks. For our commanders, I brought Amaterasu's acclaimed Apex of the Tide Vadrock list. Leite is on his Anie filter, David is piloting Anno underscore 2K's Uro Setter and Baal is playing Asma's Chain Veil Teferi. I am starting this week. I mulligan once and kept an odd end of Island and Sculling Tarns for lands. I am itching to cast this Burning Inquiry really early. I have Arcane Signet for ramp, Grand Abolisher for protection, into the Royal as interaction or as a way to abuse some of my Dockside Extortionist lines, and finally Frantic Search, which is generally solid and extra good on high tide turns. Leite has three lands, City of Brass, Marsh Flats and Verdant Catacombs. Abbasin's Judgment is a winning outlet, whereas the rest of his hand, Blood Mad Vampire, Anya's Ravager and Ulamog the Infinite Gyre are mostly filler outlets with various uses depend how important it is for him to go for recovery plans or to recover his graveyard back to his library. David's hand is, quite literally, almost only mana, which isn't bad since his commander gives him draws anyway. He has Emergence Zone as his only land, but then Sol Ring, Elvish Mystic, Talisman of Curiosity and Incubation Druid all serve to ramp him and let him cast and recast Uro. Spell Pierce is protection and interaction, while Ponder is an excellent cantry. Finally, Bal has Gemstone Caverns for him to ramp up before it's even his turn. He has three islands so he can easily pitch one of them to the caverns. Finally, he has two tutors, Mystical and Muddle the Mixture. These let him search for heavy card draw or set up for a win if he finds ways to accelerate his game plan. Time to give this match a spin. I am ready to start playing but Bal informs us that he has a pre-game action. Gemstone Caverns. He pitches an island to it, already ramping. I play a Scalding Tarn and fetch for a Volcanic Island. In a misguided attempt to wreck people's plans and because my draw and some of the cards in my hand are worthless, I cast Burning Inquiry. In response, Bal plays a mystical tutor searching for a ponder to the top just so he can try and fix himself a bit if he's lucky. Everybody draws 3 and discards 3 at random, some of us not too happy about it. Lazy has a Nulamog amidst the randomly discarded cards, so he's forced to shuffle his graveyard back to his library. I pass. Leite plays a Verdant Canacombs and passes. David plays an Emergence Zone and casts a Sol Ring. I pay 2 life to Mental Misstep it just because I see no color mana and feel like David might have gotten destroyed by the Inquiry. David then shows me that's not entirely the case as he plays a Lotus Petal and cracks it to play Elvish Mystic. Maybe I should calm myself a bit this match. Bal plays an Island and casts a Sapphire Medallion. Not bad. I draw and move to my end step. Yep. This is on brand with some of my past matches. On my end step, Late fetches for a Badlands, hinting at a Blood Crypt in his hand. Late plays a Luxury Suite, a Mana Crypt, not the Crypt we guessed at, but close, and casts Anie, fully prepared to begin the filtering. He passes the turn. David plays a Windswept Heath, fetching for a Tropical Island. He casts his commander, triggering its ETB and giving standard players some PTSD. David draws and puts a Flooded Strand into play and the Titan is sent to the command zone rather than the graveyard. That's right guys, no need to hope one of us finds a scavenging ooze to eat him up. With that, David passes to Baal, missing a land drop. Hey, my mental misstep wasn't a complete failure. Baal plays a Brainstorm and, on his end step, I cast Mystical Tutor, putting a Ponder on top. That's right, Baal isn't the only one going balls deep on this whole Tutors for a Cantrip business. I draw the Ponder and cast it, finding some ways out of the mess I made. I play a tapped Rogrin Triome and pass, hoping other players deal with whatever insanity comes from everyone else. On my end step, Late activates Anie, discarding a City of Brass and drawing a card. No madness filtering just yet. Late takes 3 from the Crypt. He plays an Emergence Zone, which is a lot scarier than the Vitz for now. 
On his end step, David fetches for a tapped breeding pool, finally getting some colored mana on his land base. David starts his turn by drawing and playing a forest. He casts Talisman of Curiosity, telling me that was what he was looking to ramp towards with Sol Ring. I point at the artifact in his graveyard and ask, that Sol Ring? David passes. Bal goes to his turn, he casts a Fabricate. He was holding a Cyclonic Rift this whole time in case Anya would combo off, but then he decides to proceed with his deck's game plan instead of trying to play slow just to police the board. He gets a Mana Crypt but chooses not to cast it this turn to spare himself some life before passing. It's my turn and I play an Arcane Signet to recover a bit from my turn 1 self-harming. I cast a Preordain, scrying 1 to the top. On my end step, Late activates Anya, discarding Anya's Ravager, Gibbering Descent, and finally a Polluted Delta. Yup, that's Late in a nutshell, tapping permanence whatever this wind blows. Late then casts some Muslim Secrets for an Entomb. He casts said Entomb, and David counters it with a Muddle the Mixture since half of the work of playing Anya is having the World Guardian up and ready. Late dodges the crypt damage on his hubkeep like a pro D&D dice roller. He plays an Urborg and follows that up with a Lotus Petal. He then casts Grim Tutor, which resolves. Late follows that up by activating Anya, discarding World Guard the Dragon and drawing a card. We all feel correct about our assumption that he was looking for this boy the entire time. Finally, he casts Animate Dead and has exactly the mana he needed to survive David's Spell Pierce and take the match. Basically, Leite uses World Guardian and Anya to cycle through his entire library while generating an infinitely large amount of mana. Eventually, he is able to discard and cast an Avacyn's Judgment that takes us all out in one fell swoop. Pedro Leite just joined our roster of victorious guests with his under-the-radar approach to Anya. However, since it was such a short one, we have decided to shuffle up and give this another spin to try and display more of the other decks. David won the roll for starting this one. He has a lot of mana sources to push him into several Uro casts. Two Islands for Lands, a Chrome Mox, a Lanoar Elves, a Wild Growth and a Carpet of Flowers. He can use Noxious Revival to either annoy one of us, namely by sending World Guardian Dragon back to Pedro Leite's top of the library, or to recur something relevant. Bal once again is able to start with Gemstone Caverns. He also has an Island, Sculling Tarn and Inventor's Fair for Lands, the latter also working as a tutor for the Chain Veil. Killer Drake is really good for disrupting a commander-centric deck or getting a value engine to himself. Time Spiral is a solid wheel and Preordain can trips him well. The biggest difficulty for Baal is not having ramp besides the caverns. I also have a Gemstone Caverns in my hand, along with an Island and Ari Mesa for lands. My hand is really solid thanks to Mystic Remora and Ponder that allow me to plan ahead. Intuition can grant me an excellent game-winning pile by itself. Force of Will is also excellent protection or interaction. Late was forced to mulligan twice. He has Swamp and Badlands for lands and a Simeon Spirit Guide to ramp him up for a turn 2 Anya. He has a couple of Madness cards to filter, Curse of Fool's Wisdom and Biting Rain. Gamble can get him World Guardian Dragon to hand or discard it. He sent Anya's Ravager to the bottom of his library. Game 2, here we go. Bal and I both have pregame actions in the shape of gemstone caverns. The table kinda giggles at how stupid this sounds. Bal exiles Kalintarn, while after a whole lot of thinking, I choose to exile Force of Will. David starts by playing a forest. He then enchants it with a wild growth, showing us that he will not be intimidated by Bal and myself. In fact, he goes further by playing a Chrome Mox imprinting Lanoir Elves. He finally taps the Mox to play a Carpet of Flowers, versus a Mono Blue and a High Tide deck. Not too shabby, he passes the turn. Bal taps his gemstone caverns to cast Preordain. He then loses 2 life to cast Gitaxian Probe, targeting me and drawing a card. All the while realizing my hand is fairly threatening. We discuss mana base a bit and I assure him I have no need to play an island yet and feed a carpet. Bal plays an Inventor's Fair and passes to me. I get a Mystic Remora in play, which I intend to fit for a bit and then put an Arid Mesa on the battlefield. See, no Islas Bonitas for the vid just yet. I pass to Pedro Late. Late plays a Badlands. He casts a freshly drawn Dark Ritual and exiles Simeon Spirit Guide to get himself a turn 1 Anya Falcon Wrath. He activates her 4 times, filtering through Madness cards until settling, passing the turn with his commander untapped. We ask him why he doesn't attack with her, but he decides not to bank on that 1 commander damage just yet. David plays an island and casts Uro. 
his commander triggers, drawing him a card and then allowing the V to put an island into play. It's flood season and everyone's invited. He passes the turn to Val. Val plays his first island and then casts Gilladrake. In response, Late activates Anye, discarding a gamble to try and find interaction for this. He doesn't, so Val gains control of Anye, taking some of Lilith's dreams with it. On Val's end step, I crack Arid Mesa for a mountain. The deck has no planes and I know I'll be going into island season soon enough. On my upkeep, I pay to keep my fish around. It hasn't been very impactful yet. I play an island and then cast Ponder, keeping the top and drawing one. Fairly content, I pass the turn. Not as happy, Late plays a swamp and then attacks Baal with the drake he just gifted him. So far, killing the mono blue player is his only way of cancelling the force trade. We wonder if Late is more of a free market kind of guy as he passes to David. David is finally able to get that carpet to provide him with something. He adds one blue mana and then plays a forest. He casts a Sensei's Divining Top, paying for the Remora. I am both outraged and disgusted by how much mana he has. David passes. Baal starts his turn by activating Anye, discarding an island and drawing a card. He plays another island and passes. I'm starting to feel like my Remora is secretly a stax piece. With that in mind, I decide to pay to keep it around. No one else is casting spells, so why should I? I play a Scalding Tarn and pass the turn to Leitu, who is still not too happy about the game so far. He attacks Baal with the Drake once again, missing a land drop this time around. David activates his top to add some extra action to Leitu's turn. On his turn, David adds two blue with the carpet and casts a personal tutor, searching for Time Twister to the top. This triggers my Remora, drawing me a card, which isn't much when you consider I might lose the cards if the Time Twister gets to happen. David draws a Time Twister with the top, looking to find actually useful cards. He casts it, triggering my Remora. I crack my Scalding Tarn for a basic island and then figure this is an okay time to play Winds of Rebuke on David's carpet and make it go away. It resolves and everyone mills too, knowing this might go back to whence they came from. Leitu then casts a free Mox Salvage, destroying David's Chrome Mox. In response, David floats one green mana and I draw yet another card. I find no counter magic, however, so the Time Twister resolves. Using the floating green mana, David casts Sylvan Library, drawing me a new card with my fresh hand. In response, Bal casts Impulse and I get another one. I'm in a pretty nice position now. The library resolves. David plays an untapped breeding pool, paying 2 life and all but announcing that he has something just in case one of us tries to overextend their attempt at winning. We are once again on Ball casting a Gitaxan probe to check my hand, losing 2 life and drawing a card. He sees that I have no free counter magic, but otherwise a pretty nicely stuffed hand. Ball then plays an island, following it up with a Mox Diamond to which he pitches a polluted delta. My fish has all but drawn me a second hand now. Baal casts a Narset Parterre Veils, annoying but still feeding my fish once again. He then casts his own Time Twister, fully aware that I do not have counter magic for it, at least since it last checked. We pass priority to David, who tries to counter the Twister with Spell Pierce. Remora triggers, but Narset tells me I can't keep drawing. Baal exiles the spell to cast Force of Will on the Spell Pierce. David casts one song on the Force of Will, effectively winning the counter magic war. Time Twister is countered. Bal activates Narset, revealing a Merchant Scroll. It's my turn and I'm uniquely positioned to try and win. I let my Remora fall as it has fulfilled its destiny like a champ. I play an island and cast Lotus Petal. I sacrifice it to cast High Tide, happy that my opponents have no untapped islands to speak of. Now I cast Merchant Scroll to find myself Intuition, which I then cast to get myself the perfect pile in Savin's Reclamation, LED and Underworld Breach. I ask David to give me one and he chooses the Reclamation since it's the most cost intensive. I cast Savine's Reclamation to get myself Underworld Breach onto the table. Bao responds by activating Anye, discarding a Cursed Totem, but does not find anything to stop me. I exile three cards to cast LED from the graveyard. I crack it, discarding my hand and generating triple blue to recast Intuition. I get Brain Freeze, Snap and Deflecting Swat. I am given Brain Freeze but I still have Fodder for LED so I cast it. Crack it for mana and start milling myself with Brain Freeze until my entire library is in my graveyard. Now I could also mill my opponents but Leite has shown an Ulamog last game so that's not the best option. 
I cast High Tide a couple of times and since it affects all islands, including new ones that come into play this turn, I recast Sivin's Reclamation from my graveyard to get myself Steam Vents and another island. Then I can cast Palinchron from the graveyard. Palinchron only requires 12 mana generated from the lands it untaps to start netting me positive mana with each self bounce. This way I can float infinite Jeskai mana. Now that I have infinite Jeskai mana, I mutate Vadrock onto Palinchron to recast Sword to Plowshares on my mutated creature and gain 4 life. I recast Vadrock from the command zone a few more times and use Underworld Breach to cast Sword to Plowshares on it until my life total is comfortably above everyone else's. I finish the game with a lethal rolling earthquake. Thank you for joining us through today's match everyone. Anya made quick work of game 1 and on game 2 Vadrock showed us the power of Jeskai intuition piles. We'd like to start the credits by thanking our current patrons and especially Izanagi, Stefan, TJ Rapp, Mike Purr, Ajimo and Illegal of Stackbreakers. If you want to support us, you can do so by liking this video, subscribing, or by becoming a patron yourself. If you want to go through other Commander adventures, click one of the videos on the right. If you want to talk with us about our games or other EDH-related matters, join us on Discord. Come with us again next week for a new set of Commanders and more decisive plays. See you all then.